Welcome back to the Rocket Animation Challenge. You can see in the animation we have here, I've made a few changes that I want to walk you through. Uh, basically, we have uh, added a trail to the rocket so that we can see what trajectory it takes. We've added propellant coming out of the rocket, and we are changing the rocket's direction. So let's take a look at how I've added each of those into the code one piece at a time. The attaching the trail was pretty straightforward. I just did the attach trail function, which is a, uh, it's actually the only way you can add a trail to a compound object in GlowScript because it doesn't give you a make trail option by default. And I needed that because now my rocket's not just going straight up. So I need to be able to see uh, where it goes. In the previous video, I didn't worry about that because it was just going straight up. The other piece that I've added to the animation is this propellant. So this is to visualize basically the smoke coming out of the rocket. Um, this is the stuff that it is, it is expelling to accelerate itself in the forward direction. And so basically what we do is every NP number of frames. So NP is number propellant. Um, this is the number of frames between displaying the propellant. So I've currently got that at set at 10, just so that we don't have propellant going all over the place. So every 10 frames, it's gonna spit out a new propellant particle. And so we're managing that with a propellant list here. And so every 10 frames, we're gonna add a sphere to this list. We're giving it the color green, cause green looks cool. And we're talking about rocket fuel. Uh, we have it start out at the bottom of the rocket here. We give it a velocity that is equal to the rocket's velocity plus its own exhaust velocity. So this exhaust velocity vector that we set up above is the relative velocity between the propellant and the rocket. And so this is just adding those two velocities together. Um, and then of course we make it small enough to be able to see and we need to give it a mass because we're also gonna be exerting a force on this thing. Um, and then every frame, in addition to updating the rocket's velocity and position, we also have to update the propellant's velocity and position. So this is where this list comes in handy. We can just loop over every item in the list. We calculate the force on that piece of propellant. We update its velocity, we update its position. Now, mostly this is gonna be dominated by the initial velocity of that it gets from the rocket, but it does change a little bit. Uh, like you saw in the animation, the propellant doesn't always follow the rocket's direction. You can see the propellant falling off one way, but the rocket has traveled a different way. And just to keep things simple, when the propellant reaches the ground, uh, we turn it invisible and uh, we're not going to worry about it anymore. We're just gonna have it stay there at the ground. We're not gonna have propellant falling into the earth and seeping beneath the ground. Now, of course, the other big deal going on is that the rocket is tilting as it points. So this is, we've got maybe some side thrusters going on, or maybe the rocket just isn't quite stable as many of my rockets are not when I launch them. Um, and so to do that, we've set up this uh, variable new angle here. And this is just gonna keep track of what angle the rocket should be pointing in. Just as a simple model, I set this up to vary with the sign of the time. So we've given an angle amplitude and an angle period. And so it's got a period of 10, um, 10 seconds in, in the simulation time. And it's got a pretty small amplitude pi over five. And so visually, we're gonna rotate the rocket using the rotate function here. To use uh, GlowScript's rotate function, we just have to give it an angle and an axis to rotate around. And so this is, now this is a little bit tricky here because this is actually the change in the angle. This is not giving it the new angle. You have to give it the change in angle. So that's why we have this new angle minus rocket angle. And then we just update the rocket's angle to be the new angle below here. So that each frame we have an updated value of rocket angle. Now what that means is I have to change the exhaust velocity because I need the propellant to be coming out uh, at the appropriate angle here based on the direction that the rocket is pointing. And I actually just realized I made a slight mistake over here because I have it popping out uh, from the vertical. So I actually need to do the same kind of rotation over here. So let's think about this for a second. I need this to be a height times the vector of, I think this will be the same thing, sine of rocket dot angle and then cosine of rocket dot angle. The reason that's flipped from the way you usually think of it, because usually X gets the cosine and Y gets the sine, is because we're measuring that angle from the vertical. And so a rocket angle of zero corresponds to Y equals one and X equals zero. So that just, uh, it's, it's flipped compared to how we usually measure angles in math and physics. And so I think the animation we get out of that is pretty interesting. It's, it's interesting to me to demonstrate how the 
propellant comes out opposite of, or the propellant comes out different from the way that the rocket travels. Oh, actually that needs to be a negative X, doesn't it? Let me just fix that right here. I think that needs to be a negative on the X here. Control two. There we go, that's better. Now it's coming out of that side, but it's traveling kind of back along this way. Um, I, what's neat to me is that this shows you that the rocket, number one, doesn't always travel in the direction that it's pointing, and that it doesn't always travel in the direction that the propellant comes out. So you've really got three vectors to think about here. You have the vector of the where the rocket's pointing, you have the rocket's velocity vector, and you have the outgoing propellant's velocity vector. So to me, that's a neat thing that you can visualize with this animation that you can't really see if you uh, calculate this out on a spreadsheet that doesn't offer you the animation. All right, so in our last couple minutes here, let's play around with the external force acting on this. To make this simple on myself, I took out the force, so I set the gravitational uh, field here equal to zero. Let's put that back in here so that this thing uh, gets pulled downward. So now our uniform gravitational field will pull downward with this uh, little g value. Let's hit control two to run. Let's see what kind of difference we get here with our rocket. You notice the propellant's falling down faster. Uh, for one thing, so the propellant is going to be pulled down pretty quickly. Uh, this is a pretty different trajectory than before, I think. Um, I'd have to put them side by side to look at them. But you can see that our, our rocket not doing quite as well, not traveling as fast as it did before, but the propellant is definitely falling down faster toward the ground. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, this thing is, is kind of sidewinding all over the place. And then let's switch out to the full-fledged gravitational force. So I'll take this piece here and comment that out. Although it would get overwritten, I don't really have to comment it out. And then let's take this piece here, uncomment it. So again, this is the full-fledged Newton's gravitational force in space. When you're near the surface of the Earth, it's approximately equal to this constant value. Uh, but let's see what happens when we run with the full-fledged gravitational force. You get pretty much the same motion, I think. That's only going to make a huge difference when the rocket goes up much, much farther. Um, you can actually do the calculation of how far up you have to go to get a 1% difference in the gravitational field, and it's a ridiculously big number. So this, this constant uh, approximation for the gravitational force works out well. But if I wanted this thing to go higher, I need to give it more fuel. So let's give it fuel and get it higher. Um, where is the fuel mass? Here we go. Let's increase the fuel mass. Let's give it a 50 fuel mass. That'll make it run longer and go higher. There goes the fuel mass. Okay, so it's it's definitely taking a little bit different trajectory. That's a little bit sharper of a turn than we had before because the rocket itself is more massive now. It has more fuel that it has to accelerate. About the same general shape though. Now of course it's running longer so we're gonna get more uh, periods of oscillation. I kind of like the fact that it's it's almost, tr I know this isn't exactly a sine curve or a cosine curve, but it's, it's kind of like tracing out a tilted sine curve or cosine curve. Well now it's a tilted distorted sine curve or cosine curve. Another fun thing might be to add in a, a wind factor to blow the propellant away. It's, it's, it looks like it's getting blown away, but that's because of the relative velocity of this thing. You can kind of see from the perspective of the ground that it's kind of all falling down in the same way. Our trajectory is definitely looking more interesting than it did before. It's kind of leveling out here though. That's interesting. Cool, so that's definitely something fun to play around with. You can play around with the uh, mass ejection rate. You can play around with the total amount of mass and the mass of the planet underneath it. Um, I hope this is a fun thing for you to, uh, to play around with and examine. 
Um, what we're going to take a look at next time is how to set up a stage separation because with a with most rockets uh, you want to eject the empty fuel tank that you no longer need so that you have a less massive thing carrying your cargo up to space. So we'll take a look at how we might implement that into this animation. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.